Sixty years ago, this was the future, according to an American automaker. With the flip of a switch. You're now under automatic control. Hands off steering. Ah, oh, this is the life. Safe, cool, comfortable. The autonomous vehicle was a dream car at the time. That dream is now becoming a reality. You can see that, look, it's being steered by nobody. Perfect, not one foot wrong. Autonomous driving now means a computer, not a person, controls the car. Vastly different technology is needed to produce such a vehicle. Please go ahead. Yeah, this is genau richtig. It's a revolution. But the first one who won has won. Automakers are competing fiercely in the race to develop self-driving cars. Nissan is aiming to lead the pack in producing autonomous cars for urban areas. We got an exclusive look at a site where this project is unfolding. A key to the development of these cars is image recognition by cameras. This requires highly advanced control technology that can ascertain the movements of other cars and people. <laughs> These cars will need to be as good as, or even better than, humans in analyzing information and making judgments. The greatest threat to automakers is the entry into the race of IT mammoth Google. The company has collected a vast amount of data by test driving cars, totaling to the equivalent of 70 times around the world. Google is poised to overwhelm the market by developing software that will essentially overtake humans in driving experience. There will be a number of manufacturers who will probably no longer be in business 20 or 30 years from now uh, as the transportation system changes. The autonomous driving revolution will have a major impact on not only automobile manufacturing, but likely will change society forever. This is the heart of Nissan's autonomous driving efforts. For the first time, cameras have been allowed inside this technology development center, which is normally off limits to unauthorized people. This is a self-driving car currently under development. Computers are tightly packed in the rear. What you see here is the brain that controls the car. For years, automakers have been locked in a competition to improve things such as engine performance and fuel efficiency. However, the focus is now on the development of software that controls the operation of the self-driving car.
12 cameras are set around the body of the car. Sensors are also attached. An autonomous car controls everything from steering to braking. The cameras and sensors are the car's eyes. They see what's around the vehicle. The automobile's software, the car's brain, is constantly analyzing information and deciding what to do. It sends commands to the steering wheel or brakes, which obey as if controlled by a human driver's hands or feet. Autonomous driving is expected to be an effective means of transport for the elderly and handicapped. It should also prevent driving mistakes thereby greatly reducing the number of traffic accidents. It's estimated that in 20 years, one in four vehicles sold globally will be autonomous. That's more than 30 million units annually. Manufacturers are trying to get the biggest possible share. The only question is how fast and how well you're going to be doing. So being better than competition rewards you with a higher level of growth, a higher level of profit. And if you are worse than competition, well, you're going to stagnate. The development of autonomous driving is divided into four levels. In level one, steering, accelerating, and braking are each controlled automatically, but done separately. Automatic braking, which is already available on the market, fits in this level. In level two, several operations are done automatically at the same time. The simultaneous steering and acceleration for a lane change is an example of this stage. In level three, all of the operations of the car are performed automatically, but the driver needs to be present. Finally, in level four, even the driver can take a back seat. The car is fully autonomous. Automakers around the world are now mainly between levels two and three in their race to develop autonomous cars. Japan's Toyota and Honda, America's Ford and GM, Germany's Audi and Mercedes-Benz are all jockeying for position. This is Silicon Valley, home to America's cutting-edge IT companies. In many ways, it's become ground zero in the fierce competition to produce self-driving cars. Tetsuya Iijima is leading Nissan's autonomous driving engineering team. Nissan is also using Silicon Valley as a base for inputting the world's top technology and human resources into its project. <laughs> Staff are going through a trial and error process in collaboration with their R&D bases in Japan. The value of this car is such that we are pouring in the world's best talent and brain power. 
To be the first to make a breakthrough, we'll need to give it our all. For the last two years, Ijima and his team have been repeatedly test driving this car on public roads. Their immediate goal is to drive it without any control by a human along a designated course. This course runs for about 20 kilometers, passing through a freeway and an ordinary street. Engineers will adjust the car so the steering and braking can be accurately controlled based on the information collected by various sensors. We have to adjust the timing for the many detailed decisions the car has to make, such as deciding how the car interacts with other cars, when it accelerates or slows down, and how close it can safely get to another vehicle. Watching the white line with the camera, the car decides the route. It checks the car ahead to know when to stop. As it prepares to merge onto the freeway, the car moderates its speed, entering the flow of traffic and keeping a safe distance from other vehicles. But when it's coming out of this big turn, the car suddenly begins to shimmy. <laughs> Ijima reflexively grabs the steering wheel. It's likely the car didn't fully grasp the shape of the turn. Nissan is aiming to have autonomous cars on urban streets by 2020. They've set an ambitious target that no other automaker has been able to reach yet. There is far more data an autonomous car has to collect on urban streets. Self-driving cars have to keep track of vehicles on all sides and watch out for pedestrians crossing the street while reading traffic signals and signs. Autonomous vehicles must accurately grasp all of this information and control their operations. Nissan will have to overcome a slew of problems if they want to achieve their target by 2020. We will improve accuracy. We've achieved the basic operations, but not the goal. The hardest part lies ahead. Once everything is safe, German manufacturers are a lap ahead of their competitors in the race to develop autonomous cars. It's now towards the north curve of turn one. You can see that. Look, it's being steered by nobody. It's being controlled. Audi has succeeded in autonomously driving a car at a speed of more than 200 kilometers per hour. The German government has made autonomous driving a key part of its industrial policy, fully supporting the development of self-driving cars. Mercedes-Benz has introduced a level two car into the market ahead of other automakers, one that can automatically carry out different operations simultaneously. 
This is a new model the company introduced in the spring of 2016. Although the car is not self-driving on urban streets, it can autonomously change lanes on expressways and do other operations. Mercedes-Benz has also already announced its concept car for a level four fully self-driving car. When the car is switched to the autonomous driving mode, the steering wheel retracts and the interior opens up to become a relaxing space like a living room. This is what society will look like in the future with this car. When you leave your house in the morning, your car will meet you at the entrance. Input your destination and your car will take you there automatically. It also stops automatically when it sees a pedestrian crossing the street. Please go ahead. Mercedes-Benz says the cars will be very safe and greatly reduce traffic accidents. Thank you. With our history and experience, we are leading the world. I think we will continue to lead the world in the future as well. We will not lose to any rival in the world. Elbowing its way into the fierce competition of autonomous cars is a company from a very different industry. That company is the IT giant, Google. We've made the car stronger. We've added they have charged into the battle, uh, armed with their expertise in big data analysis and artificial intelligence. And what they can do for the world. The hundreds and thousands of pedestrians, cyclists, and vehicles that have been out there, and understand what they look like and use that to infer what other vehicles should look like and other pedestrians should look like. And then, even more importantly, we can take from that a model of how we expect them to move through the world. We are looking forward to having this technology on the road. Car manufacturers have been moving forward with their technology one step at a time, from level one on the way to their ultimate goal, level four. In contrast, Google has taken a completely different approach. It's aiming to leap directly to level four with a perfected self-driving car. Their secret weapon, big data. Google's cars are prowling urban streets, absorbing any data related to traffic. For example, Engineers want to know how children and adults interact with traffic. They'll use this data to develop software that has the same kind of predictive ability drivers develop through their experiences. How far has Google advanced in this area? We asked for interviews, but the company turned down our requests. This is a parking garage inside their development facility. A large fleet of what looks like driverless cars is parked there. Every day, the cars stream out of the garage one by one.
we decided to follow one of them. A sensor unit is attached to the roof to ascertain the car's surroundings. The car is traveling on a public road at about 30 kilometers an hour. It approaches an intersection that has no traffic signal. The car slowed down because it probably detected a pedestrian crossing the street. The car decelerated as it approached the cyclist and then passed her, keeping a safe distance. Hi. Hey, how's it going? Ah, good. That's cool. Is this a self-driving car? Yes. Oh, well, so actually it's uh, one, almost 100 self-driving? Yes, fully autonomous, level four. Our, our system always follows the speed limits and it's really safe. The problem is other people are not as safe. We were unable to independently verify the level of development the car is at. But Google is using more than 50 cars for self-driving tests. Google vehicles have been driven over 3 million kilometers. That's more than 70 times the circumference of the Earth. One car industry analyst says Google's not aiming to develop vehicles. I think what they will um, do is, is be a provider of the autonomous operating system, you know, much like they, they do today with the Chrome OS and, and with Android for mobile devices. You know, they want to provide the autonomous operating system for vehicles. the provider for the autonomous driving system. That means Google will be providing the software that it develops as the brain of a self-driving car to automakers worldwide. If Google manages to maneuver itself into becoming a market leader in this area, the position of automakers could be threatened, the analyst points out. What well, Google picture, I guess, I guess, that all the car company could be just supplier for the Google. I think in time, you know, some of, some of these companies will, will probably find that that is their best option. Um, when, you know, for the, for the near term, near and midterm, you know, they can get by without having autonomous vehicles. Uh, but longer term, they will probably have to have some autonomous options available. And, you know, if they can't develop it in-house, then they will probably have to go with a partner. With Google a player in the driverless car space, the competition has heated up. Nissan is looking for a strong partner to speed up its development of autonomous driving technology. Israel has fostered high-tech industries based on its military technology. That's why the leader of Nissan's autonomous driving project, Tetsuya Ijima, has come here.
Nissan is gunning to beat its competitors in making autonomous driving on urban streets a reality. Ijima has come to Israel in search of a special piece of technology. This is a place where high tech is concentrated, where new technology that attracts attention is created. Coming here is a great chance to see that new technology. The company Ijima is visiting is Mobileye. It specializes in world-leading image recognition technology for cameras. Hello, hello. Nice Welcome. to Mobileye. Hello. <laughs> Amnon Shashua is the chairman of Mobileye. To reach its goal ahead of its competitors, Nissan decided to partner with Mobileye in the field of image recognition, which is key for autonomous driving. Can you excuse us for a little while? I'm sorry. The meeting involved some commercial secrets, so filming wasn't allowed. After some negotiating, our crew was granted access to one of Mobileye's R&D facilities. Top-class engineers are gathered here for programming and other tasks. This is Mobileye's image recognition technology. Watch how the technology works on urban streets. It identifies each automobile, each motorcycle, anything that moves. It instantly calculates the speed of other cars and their distance. It detects a car suddenly backing out and anticipates what the car will do next. And Mobileye understood it and developed those algorithms over many, many years and reached a level of perfection. It is very, very difficult to compete with the level of functional safety that Mobileye has, has developed. So our relationship with, with Nissan is, is very, very deep and uh, very, very uh, extensive. We believe we will not be able to make breakthroughs without using the world's most advanced technology. We want to quickly make this world of autonomous driving, which has never existed up to now, a reality. Back at Nissan's development base in Silicon Valley. Oh, he, he comes from Israel. Hello. 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 A Mobileye engineer is riding in the test car. Her monitor is showing the images filmed by the cameras. The car is approaching an intersection. After it detects a vehicle in front, it detects the red light and comes to a stop. When the light turns green, it detects the movements of the other cars and moves forward. Oh, 
The test drive is proceeding smoothly, but on this day, a problem emerges. Not turning enough, the car sways into the next lane. Had another vehicle been there, the test car could have collided with it. So, what actually happened? The software brain analyzes the information detected and sent by the eyes or cameras, and then communicates its decision to the steering wheel and accelerator. It's possible the information from the mobile eye cameras wasn't communicated accurately to the software. Or perhaps the software, Nissan's responsibility, did not accurately communicate its directions to the steering wheel. That's our data. The engineers take out the test run data and immediately start trying to locate the cause of the problem. We start from here, rim. During this culture. Uh, one more there's a vehicle in the adjacent way, it's a bit yes. scary. We can smooth it, yeah, smooth it by steering control, but uh, the data itself is not that smooth. Hmm. But we, have a, we also have the solution to correct it. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I think it should be to, together with mm. the mm. data and mm. the control on mm. both sides. Mm. The Mobileye engineer asks the development team in Israel to modify the program. <laughs> Nissan's engineers also fix the software controlling the operation of the car. We have just sent the data to Israel. There's an eight-hour time difference, so they started their morning shift just now. It's a little before noon there. If they find a bug, they fix it within 24 hours. It's the following morning. Okay. After inputting each of the corrected programs, the engineers head out to the course. They approach the curve where the car swayed out too far the day before. It makes the turn smoothly. I think this is better, worse uh, behavior from uh, the drive yesterday. Better. Better from better. yesterday? Better, yeah. Okay. Much better. Yeah? Much better. Okay. <laughs> mm, it is much better. Uh, I so behind the car. Every day, the engineering team is solving these problems one by one. A long road still lies ahead until the car reaches the level performed by a human's brain and eyes. A milestone day for the development team has arrived. Oh, 
Appearing at this event is Nissan CEO Carlos Ghosn. He has come to the United States to find out how much progress has been made with the image recognition system. Our this speaker has uh, uh, 360 degree sensing. We are 360 degree yeah. sensors, sensors. So cameras. 12 cameras, vibrators, four laser scanners. Oh wow. Yeah. <laughs> with CEO Gon sitting next to him. Ijima heads out for a ride on public roadways. fine. Anything from Mr. Gohn? Impressed. He really knows that undertaking this challenge in the tough environment of a real-world situation means technological development to commercialize the car. Automakers around the world have already made cars with self-driving functions commercially available. CEO Gon has again made it clear that he wants Ijima and his team to proceed with the development of their car on schedule. It will be a long battle. We have to climb up from one stage to the next as we head toward our goal. Autonomous driving will require technology that's very different from what's been used in automobile manufacturing up to now. The impact of that could shake the very foundation of the entire car industry, one of Japan's key sectors. Companies like Toyota and Nissan are at the top of the pyramid, with many parts makers linked to them. The auto industry accounts for some $500 billion of the Japanese economy and makes up 20% of Japan's total exports. The revolution of autonomous cars will also force great changes on parts makers. Murakami Corporation is Japan's largest producer of automobile mirrors. The company has a 40% share of the domestic market now, but the self-driving revolution could irreparably damage its business. If autonomous vehicles flood the market, it's very likely cameras will replace car mirrors, because how the environment around a car is processed will change. 90% of our business comes from mirror production and it said it might be lost. If we were asked if the company could survive as what we are now, we would probably have to say, no, we couldn't. We will have to develop something else. Feeling a sense of crisis, Murakami Corporation is hurriedly developing parts that will be used in the age of the self-driving car. What they're developing now is a device that will display the surrounding images captured by cameras. They're aiming to survive 
by investing in new technology, different from what they've focused on for decades. Self-driving cars are, one day, going to radically change the very makeup of the automobile industry. The number of hidden electronic control components will rapidly increase. We're determined not to fall behind. Japan's automobile industry will face pressure from the changes created by autonomous driving. Overseas parts makers now have a bigger presence in the Japanese market. This is an auto parts exhibition, where more than 500 companies are showing off their products. One booth has caught the eye of many visitors. It's the German parts maker Continental. They originally made tires, but they're currently developing cameras, sensors, and other products that will play a major role in autonomous driving. Christoph Hagedorn is the CEO of Continental Japan. His company has been receiving a lot of inquiries about its products from Japanese car makers. For example, there was a company that showed that Suzuki still has here the, uh, the stereo camera, and even so they have decided for This is the camera. This is our car and rider, and these are even the radars uh, we are selling. So we are so happy. These are, our, these are Continental components. We're very grateful for having Mazda as a customer. They actually were one of the first Japanese customers where we introduced our uh, Ardas technology. Germany, as a country, is also pushing the development of autonomous driving. Continental's business is booming. The company boasts annual sales revenues of some $40 billion. This is a sensor with an integrated camera and laser system. We can provide individual parts or integrated systems. Continental's strength comes from its ability to provide not only individual parts, but also product sets that combine cameras, sensors, software, and other technology. On the other hand, many Japanese parts makers each supply only highly specialized parts. Continental is capitalizing on its ability to offer integrated systems as it works to break into the Japanese market. The company is already test driving its automated car on highways in Japan. The car's license plate number? 2020. That's the year of the Tokyo Olympics. And as Japan speeds up its development of self-driving cars ahead of the Summer Games, Continental is making the country a target for its products. Toyota Motors headquarters is in the city of Toyota in Aichi Prefecture. In 2015, Continental opened up this office, next to Toyota's headquarters, for marketing and other activities. It has around 50 employees, and it's planning on doubling that number in a few years. 
Continental is also opening a string of sales offices near the headquarters of other automobile makers. We are not focusing on the Japanese market per se, we focus on the Japanese customers, and that globally. When we look, at, when we look to continental Japan, we are responsible for the global business with the Japanese car manufacturers. And our goal is to double the sales that we enjoy right now with those customers over the next five years. And we have today a substantial sales already, but we believe with all the technology we offer, we can even double that over the next period of the next five years. Nissan is aiming to see its self-driving cars on urban streets by 2020. In August 2016, the automaker launched sales of a car equipped with self-driving functions for driving on expressways. The vehicle is fitted with a mobile eye camera that has the latest image recognition technology. Nissan has taken its first step towards its goal. Industries around the world are anticipating the era of autonomous driving, and they're on the move. Government officials and representatives of automobile manufacturers from different countries attended a meeting in Tokyo. They discussed the creation of common rules for safety standards for autonomous driving and other related matters. From dream technology to reality, autonomous driving is entering a new phase. This is a turning point. Can we gain new force, new impetus at this stage? That's the question now as we head toward the future. In the latter 18th century, this is what vehicles looked like. Simple, steam-powered vehicles. They've evolved and changed with the times, as have our lifestyles and societies. We're on the cusp of the autonomous driving revolution. A transformational age is just down the road and it will be unlike anything we've experienced before.